Hello and welcome to the January 10th, 2023 Psych Board meeting for the town of Berwick. Um, oh, there we go. I'd like to call this meeting to order. We have the entire board present, <laughs> Thank uh, you. town manager, town clerk, members of the public, and special guests. Uh, can we please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from December 27th, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second move. Uh, motion a second. Any further comments? All those in favor? Mark abstains because he is present. So we are all set there. Uh, next, we have a uh, first public comment. Uh, this is separate from the discussion we will have soon for the Berwick Water Company. So is there any public comment not about that? All right. I will close the first public comment. Um, and that brings us to our public hearing for the um, uh, on the Maine Water Company and uh, Burke Operations contract. James, can you give us a little background? Absolutely. So the reason for tonight is to hear uh, your questions. And the reason for considering this contract is the Town of Berwick Water Department has been faced with some operations challenges and some staffing challenges. Um, to find level four operators is as proves a challenging. Um, right now we have an interim uh, water operator from York, and um, I think Main Water has, has has helped us over the past couple of months. They've been there, um, and we've been considering a, a contract and. This contract would include water operations. So that includes customer service, billing, administrative services, routine operations, and maintenance services, and non-routine and capital services. So I know one of the uh, first questions would be, is this going to cost uh, money for the taxpayers? And that answer is no. Uh, is it going to cost a rate increase? The answer to that is also, no, going to this contract will not cause a rate increase. Um, if you could look at our, um, we have a rate increase that has already been planned to go into effect for July 1, 2023. And that is to cover the cost of our water bond and water improvement project. So the cost for contracting with Maine Water is $22,000 per month. That's in the contract that is also available online. We have um, uh, under the news section at the town website, it, it's titled Berwick Water Operations and Maine Water Company. You can go there. There's a repository of information. Uh, Maine Water is here at the previous select board meeting. That video is on that page. Um, we were updating frequently asked questions. So any questions and answers that um, Answers that are, or questions that are answered tonight will be on that page as well. Um, so the contract is available right now for your review. And the cost for typical staffing of the water department is $24,592 a month. And that pro forma that shows the town cost are available as well. So it does, um, it does constitute a slight uh, cost savings. So again, tonight's to hear your questions and, and comments on the contracts, and I'll kick it back to the chair. All right. Um, yes, and before we get to any public questions, I just wanted to reiterate a few concerns that I'd seen online. Um, this is, it, uh, should we enter into this contract, the, uh, the main water company will not have control over rates. They will not be able to change rates. That's still under the town's purview. We control that. 
Um, they do not own our water plant or our water lines. The town still owns them. They are just going to be operating them for us under contract. Uh, the upgrades to the water plant that have already been planned for years to deal with previous issues of, of high manganese and you know drought conditions, those plans are still going through. Those plans are not going to cost more. They're not going to. They're still on the same timetable. Uh, and basically, once they're completed, if should this contract go through. Maine Water will just have a more advanced plant in which to operate. So, um, with that being said, any member of the public can come forward and ask a question. Just uh, come up. Anybody? Just Maine Water, want to speak? Maine Water, is there anything that you want to add? I don't have anything to add. I uh, do appreciate the invite uh, two weeks ago. And, if you could step oh, to yeah, the microphone, course, please. Course, yeah. um, I do not have anything else to add. Um, appreciate the invite tonight and as well as the invite two weeks ago. Um, if the town is interested, still interested in the contract agreement, we're prepared and happy to do it and to start the, the conversions that we had talked about two weeks ago. Um, and thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Where are you guys from? Oh, please. It Thank that you. was the only question. Oh, sure. <laughs> yep. The question is, where are they from? Yes, uh, uh, Main, Main Water Company's uh, office is based out of Saco, Maine. May we ask a question? Yes, go right ahead. I'm sorry to uh, engage you in calisthenics here, but <laughs> 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 just so that uh, the question is being asked, one of the reasons that uh, we've had, people have known we've had a shortage of operators there to effectively so you have additional resources should we have a problem here in Berwick that you could draw from to back up any issues that may occur here in Berwick, is that correct? That's correct. So, so we would, we, we would and, and in, our, in our plan putting together this proposal, we had put together um, internally a staffing plan to staff. And, and of course, any water operation is at risk of if you lose someone, if someone leaves, if you need to move to a termination, if someone gets sick, all of those things that put you at risk. We, around the state, we have we have 60 employees in water operations, uh, 60 water professionals that that we in the past have moved around um, when needed. Um, so we're we're certainly prepared to do that for Berwick, but but we're prepared to do that with all of our systems as well. But they they, they um, we don't have to worry about employees or staff or anything. Yeah. That's nothing to do with us anymore. The, that right. under the agreement that would That's be main water's mean. responsibility. Okay. That's correct, right. Mark. Yep. If, if you got a question, you got yeah. Please ask if you got Where a question. Where do the employees go that already work for the water company? If, if we're going to replace them with these guys, we don't need them, right? They get offered a job, right? Does this employees get offered a job? No. Yeah. Right yeah. now, we have one. Right yeah. now, we there's only uh, one full time employee of the water department that is employed by the town of Berwick. The, we have another employee who's basically contracted out through York County, right? So, your your water district. district. Yeah, York, York water, water district. district. Um, so um, and so essentially, under this new contract, um, they would cease being an employee of the town, and if they want to continue, you know, working for working in the town or working, um, then they would apply for a job with Maine Water, right? And and get a job through them. Um, but from our perspective, we wouldn't have, uh, we would not directly pay any water employees anymore. Right. Which was one of the issues we had is maintaining certified water operators. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's why issue. it's important to have those back up because if we have issues that come up, they have the resources to say, okay, this person's out, let's move somebody else in to ensure that we don't go without a licensed operator. Yeah. Could I just get your name for the record, please? Who? Me? Yeah. Bob. Bob? Yeah. And your address? Berwick. <laughs> <laughs> Could you share your last name? Thompson. Thank you. Uh, it, it, just, just for the record, she, she, has, she has to ask that for the minutes. Is right. Because this is a public hearing, they have to know who is asking the questions whether they're residents of Berwick, that type of thing. Yeah. So it, it's not prying into anybody's <laughs> affairs or anything. So is uh, well, 
The one question I have is we pay for a town water and sewer. If, if you could step to the mic, please. Yes. People at home are listening also. They can't hear you when you're sitting in the audience. We pay for the town water and sewer. Yeah. But I live out on Guinea Road. I use my own water and my own sewer. So my vote in this shouldn't have anything to do because if I have to pay for town sewer already, when the town runs the line by my property, I'm going to have to have a pump to pump the crap up the hill. I've been paying for the sewer this whole time, correct? Well, it, no. No, the, no, the, you, no, the, well, the, I'm not paying for the sewer. Yeah, the sewer. Well, it's on my bill. I, I haven't seen my bill for two years, but the wife has been you taking You've been paying the sewer bill? Yes, sir. You live on Guinea Road? Yes, sir. The damn thing doesn't go down that far. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But I still had to pay a sewer bill and water. I called the town manager up and told him, when my wall goes dry, I'm coming down for water. That doesn't seem right, the, the, it? It's two separate bills because it's two separate departments. Right. Yeah. And the and the sewer especially is, is sort of their own quasi municipality. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that seems really odd that you would get a bill from them. I looked for the bill the wife couldn't find in time for me to get here. I was running later as it was. Yeah. But I can bring it down to the t down to the town hall and show you. But you bring them right down the sewer plant. Well, okay. uh, just for clarification, the the Berwick sewer district is separate from the town. town. Yeah, is they are their own entity. Right. Um, they make their own rules. They go through their own rate increases. So sewer has nothing to, nothing do, to do with town. With, right. with yeah. us okay. directly. Um, as far as the water, do you um, get a water bill too? Well, no, you I'm not sure about the water bill. I know well, the sewer okay. was on there, and I was like, yeah. what, what are we paying sewer for? We don't even use the town sewer. As, as far as the water and, and, and the sewer also is is. We all pay for it. I live on Cemetery Road, and town water and sewer doesn't go by my house. But is in our budget every year, there's a line item for us to pay the water department and the sewer department, the sewer for the municipal yep. facilities. Up. But the, the town also pay all of us also pays for the hydrant fees and things like that, you know, for the fire protection. So. No, people say that, no, I'm not on it, it doesn't affect you. It, it does in a, in a way, you know, we all pay for some of it. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't get a separate bill. Right, no, yeah. no, it's, it's all included in the taxes and the budget. Right, you don't even see it in your tax bill. Right, well, just like the school tax. I mean, it's right. everybody pays that. Exactly. The people in town all vote number in the outskirts, so they get screwed. <laughs> all right, thank you. No problem. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Peter Hashem, Kenny Road. Question I have is uh, everybody knows the town of Berg has a real problem with the water. Okay, it comes out of the Salmon Falls River, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Been doing this for years. So is this going to solve the problem for all the people in town that have this problem constantly? Seems like year after year. There's something going wrong where they got to get bottled water or whatever. It don't go directly to me because I don't have, I got my own well water. But I know people in town that, you know, been putting up with this for a long time. Right. Yeah. That's one so reason why we the have. The question is, is this going to solve their problem? This is the going to have. This is two separate issues. Yeah. The, the, the issue that we've had with the water in town has been mostly due to drought during the summer months, higher levels of manganese. Um, the plant upgrades that have already been planned and paid for and well, got money for and everything like that, those are going to address those issues. Those issues are already, uh, we're doing plant upgrades into this year and into 2024. Um, they're hopefully gonna be finished by winter 2024. So basically we're building like half a new plant basically. Well, you, you know, and, you and did upgrades before. This is, and they haven't seen to do the trick. This is for the people. Not this is a completely different. This is a a. Uh, how many times upgrade. have we heard that story? It's a different story. The question, you know. So I like, have to believe the, it to this, see this, it. In terms of this, uh, this won't affect that one way or the other. This is just about the operation of the plant. Well, they, 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 it, it should reflect that we don't want to see brown water, right? No, of course. You're going to help us out with that? <laughs> <laughs> Main water? So yeah, what, are, what are they actually going to do then? Well, they're, they're going to operate the, plant. the water plant. We, we still have to say, if, if we approve this contract. So you're telling me same... that the, the town 
can't operate the plant itself efficiently? We, we don't have the employees. We've been having can't trouble find keeping number it four. staffed. So you're paying them 22000 a month? Yeah, we're spending more of that anyway. We're spending more than 22000 a month the town. Yeah. So we're actually saving money by going to Maine Water. And if you put one thing, more employee in there... We're, I also know, uh, we're saving twenty grand a year on it. What, what anything else, I don't, I don't know about. It's a savings from what the town's if, paying. If, if, I, if I may, is a little bit of history. Mark and I have been dealing this for almost nine years since we've been on the you. board. Is the problem has been over the years is the plant wasn't the plant before wasn't operating efficiently. Um, there was regular maintenance that wasn't being done properly. There were other things that could have been being done there that weren't being done there. And that led to some of the turnover that we've had recently with the personnel at the plant trying to change things and get things working again. As far as the water quality <clears throat> is two years ago, three years ago, we started the process of looking for money to upgrade the plant. Is Summersworth gets their water from the river also. They use a slightly different system to filter their water and, and treat their water. And what we're looking to do is to upgrade ours so we have a similar system. So that hopefully will take care of that problem. Right. What Maine Water does is they have this the daily operational, make sure that the chemicals are put in properly, make sure that the plant is run properly. You know, so is Send out we're going to give them it, they, they have to work with the existing plant now. Yeah. Is we're scheduled to start construction on the new part of the plant this year and have that finished in the winter, fall or winter of 2024. And at that time, hopefully that should take care of all the problems we've been having with that brown water. The contract we're looking at with them would run until that time and at that time, it will be up to the town again whether we renew their contract or we take it all back in ourselves and hire our own personnel again. Right. But like everything else over the last several years with the pandemic and everything, is finding good help is hard to find. And yeah, but <laughs> you're getting water out of the Salmon Falls River. We spent, and we spent that, that river is nowhere near being clean. No, okay, we, the that, water that's why is, we need an upgraded plant. So, but you but just, isn't there we, any we other source of water you can get? Yeah. We had test borings done around town. Yeah, but is there any other source? Like, you can't no, do a well? well? We just, I'm just telling you, we had oh. test borings done to try to find well water. We couldn't find it. Yeah. Well, we found water. We couldn't find enough that would produce. Yeah, it's done we couldn't find water. a well that could produce enough volume that the town needed. 400 gallons a minute. Yeah. Well, tap in the South Berwick. They got more than they can use. <laughs> is, that, is, then you got to pipe it all the way down here, so there's a huge expense on... Is the, is a million the dollars a mile? A million dollars a mile, dollars a mile, a mile to run the pipe from the coal. South Berwick has excellent water. They, they have wells. Yep. 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 Thank you. No, yep, thank you. Who else? Please. Jamie Blood, I own Corner Point Brewing. Yeah. So water's a little <laughs> important. <laughs> Slightly. Important. Um, just a real quick question: with if with Maine Water taking if they're going to take over, with a fully staffed um, water department, are there any upgrades or any changes we'll see this year? Improvements, say, like with an actual fully staffed. I would say the changes are probably going to be slight. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 I mean, this year was bad for a number of reasons, but mostly because it was a huge drought this year, and that was yep. real bad. Um, we're hoping we can skate through 2023, 2024 without a major, major drought like that one. But um, if it's if it's just as bad this year as it was last year, then there's not going to be much different that they're going to be able to do. Well, I, I think we should address that to Maine Water. So ask that question yeah. to Maine Water. Yeah. No, he, he's no, the one who's going to be running it. Yeah, please. What's the story? Step right up. Sure. Yeah, so... Um, and. As as the as it's a good question, and, and as the select board highlighted, the they're they're working with with Wright Pierce Engineering, right. um, who and and working with a project manager named Dan Flagg, who we've worked with on several projects across the state, and what they're specifically working on, um, or, or what their specific challenge in that facility is, is filtration for manganese. So that is a surface water plant, and it's a filter plant. It's designed to filter. 
But in the, in the drought, in the, when the water is low and the iron and manganese levels rise, those filters are unable to perform the way they should. Um, so what, what Wright Pierce has, is currently working on, and, and, and we've had a chance to talk to Wright Pierce as well, is a, is a pre-filtration project. So to, to get rid of the majority of that iron and manganese before it hits the current plant. Um, are there ways that our operators can optimize um, the, the current facility once we have our eyes on it? Very possible, yeah. um, but we can't stand here and promise that because we, we need to right. get in and, and, and thoroughly learn how to run the facility, and we have the operators to do that. Um, I, in speaking to Wright Pierce, they have um, a high level of confidence. They'll be able to address the issue. So I think whatever optimization that we can do this year, um, hopefully we don't have a drought. Um, and then to get this project online, that is something that we also know how to do. We know how to work with a consulting engineer to, to see a project through. But as far as promising that there's not going to be a water quality issue in town before that project is complete, I don't think we can do that. Um, but, but we can optimize it you know, really the best that we can. Right. You'll be more on the ball than we are. Sure. Yeah. And 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 to the to the staffing front, there's a very specific rule from the state of Maine. And and it's and it's it comes from the EPA where the the water regulations come from. It's filtered down through the Maine Drinking Water Program. And the facility that you run is given a class of treatment. This one is a class four. And at any point, if you don't have a class four operator running the facility, you're in violation. You're in violation of the rules. You don't have assurance that the water going out the door is safe to drink. And that was the concern of the drinking water program. Um, and that's the challenge for any water system is, is having, having class four operators, class three operators, whatever you need to do. Um, I think that's the solution that, that we bring and we're happy to bring. Um, and it is a challenge there. It's harder to find operators than it's, than it's ever been before. That's that's a thing. We, as you, as you spoke here from Corner Point, we we don't want to have bad water for you. And all these people are going to move in next door. We don't want that to happen next door. We we want to encourage people to come in. That's one of the reasons why we have the well, main water here. They, they, that's what they do. We, what do we know? Really, we don't know anything. And finding the licensed operators is I mean, getting just, more and more difficult. It's terrible. I'd, I'd like to I'd like to address the the question about rate increases also. Um, as a public utility, uh, the, the water department and the sewer department also have to go through the Public Utilities Commission in order to get rate increases. And we went through that process several years ago. Um, they okayed an increase at that time. The same thing, we had public hearings. We went through the process. And they broke it down into two separate years so that it wouldn't all hit at once. And the second part of it is hitting this July 1st, correct? So that rate has already been increased. It's already in the pipeline. It has nothing to do with what's going on right now. Um, any further increase down the line, again, would have to come to a public hearing again. The Public Utilities Commission would be involved and would go through that process again. But that would be left up to Maine Water to tell us that they need a rate increase. Right. Well, no, because no, that's not even no, the, that's the, the that's way, awesome. the, essentially, the, go the way this that, is going to work is crazy. that they are collecting the, the fees that we set. We set the, the price. They're going to collect them, and they're going to give it to us. We're writing them a check for their work. If we decide that there's some sort of imbalance that needs to be corrected, then that's when we come into play. The, as long as we're paying them, they're not going to care. They're not, they're not going to care if the rate is low or high or mid or what. They have a well, I would they hope they would pay attention to that rate, Noah, well, because let me tell you something. They're not going to be dropping the price. We've got to keep rates that are affordable, right? and, and they're going to make us be able to put money into the into the water system in this damn town. I agree. So but we're gonna still they're going to be telling us, I hope, that, 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 look, we need to spend some money. We need to get a rate increase. And that after that, we take off. Yeah, I would hope you would. Yeah, Mark, and and that's what we had talked about two weeks ago was the financial services piece that as we're in the transition in our financial controller, we weren't comfortable putting in the contract. We think we'd be prepared to do in a year. So for some of our other operational contracts, we also do 
some, uh, we do the monthly books, but we also walk the municipality through some forecasting and, yeah. and what to expect and understanding um, which, you, which, which, which this group already does, but understanding the implications of your capital investments and rising chemical prices and, and, and labor and what that means to water rates. So that's a, that, you know, what we'll do in the first year, Mark, is, is as we see opportunities for improvement, um, letting you know what the risks are and what the prices are and informing the town. Um, as we agreed to in, the, in, in revising the agreement, meeting with the select board twice a year to give an update on the system. Um, in, the, in the financial service piece that we would love to offer uh, once we get our feedback under us and fully staff, um, we could also offer some of the budgeting and forecasting right. services as well. It, 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 you're involved in the water industry every day. So you know if there's state grants or federal grants out there that might help us out. We're not paying attention all the time to that type of free money. So, so they're basically going to be our partner. Yeah, really there, where it's going to be. there's, there's, uh, and there's better, op there's more opportunities now, um, really through the drinking water program yeah. Um, yeah. after the passing of the infrastructure bill. And we work very closely with the drinking water program. Uh, to go through those applications, so we would we'd certainly partner with the town on that. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions from the public? Are there any comments that the current water plant director would like to make? I think we're okay. That will cover everything. Sure. Any further comments from the board? I just, I just, you know, want to go over again. You know, is Mike and I are approaching our, our ninth year here on the board, and this is something that we've been dealing with for nine years, and it was the problem before that also. Um, is that for the the first couple of years there wasn't much problem with the water, but then that first drought hit, and I'll never forget when we were talking to the chief operator at that time and talked about it and he said, well, oh, brown water happens every summer, you know, it'll clear up eventually. And and that wasn't acceptable to us. And that's when we all started looking into, you know, what we needed to do to get this plant up to where it should be. And as I said, you know, in the past is things weren't maintained properly. So it wasn't working efficiently is it's been a struggle and we know that. Um, I've been fortunate. I don't have town water, but I do feel your problem. You know, well, even even if there was no no problem with the water, since I still like my well water. <laughs> but the thing is, we we have new people that want to move into town on the edge, and we've got to make sure that we have. Uh, and not even that; it, it's serving the people that are already here. Yeah, you know, them. you know, is and unfortunately, is the the plant is showing its age and. The processes don't work like they should anymore, and people expect more, which they should. So I think this is moving in the right direction. I think this will help, and I'm hoping that, especially once we get the new part of the plan up and running, that I won't be hearing about this anymore. Yeah, well, I think again, gonna, I might not be here. Yeah, I think we're going to see an improvement right off of them. Are you ladies on town water? I am. Is that why you're here? Mm -hmm. I want to know where. If you would have found a new source, no, we, uh, we yeah. tried. We, we, we drilled all over town. Yeah, is the problem? The problem. The problem had been is, as Mark said, we, is close to the plant. We couldn't find a source, you know, with enough, you know, to deliver. And you do multiple wells. And like well on each end of town. And <laughs> we, we, it's the, the, problem, the problem again comes down to having yeah. to having to pipe it to the plant. Right. And at a million dollars a mile is what we were quoted as a price several years ago, which now is probably a million and a half dollars mm -hmm. the way everything else has gone up, is even if you just go a couple miles out of town, is your piping is going to cost as much as your plant is. So, but if you have ideas and, and different ways we might be able to go about it, come to the meeting and talk to us. You know what I mean? If you've got a place you think you make a great well, we'd love to know it. Because we know there's water over on the South Burrow side. We know there's water up water. behind behind uh, the, the old high school up at there's water David by the Heath. There's water up by the sod farm. But again, it comes to cost effectiveness. Right. Yeah, I, I basically at a certain point it comes to 
we have to build a whole new water plant wherever the well would be. <laughs> and if we're going to build a whole new water plant, might as well upgrade the current water plant for the same price. And you know, so <clears throat> if there's no further comment, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we enter into a contract with Maine Water Company as presented to us. I'll second it. Any further comments? All those in favor? All right. I will close this public hearing. Let's get that paperwork and sign it. <laughs> get it off our backs. I'll get it to you. Okay. Yeah. Come on. All thank, right. thank you, everybody. Yes, thank, thank you. you. And contrary to popular belief, we encourage people to come to our meeting. Oh, yes, yeah. we want people to come to the meeting. Come anytime. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Nope. Stay up. Stay up. Plenty of Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, next, we have the reports of committees. We have none. We need to get a separate Department reports. We have none. Safe travels. and presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Josh Jones, Recreation Director. Good evening. Hi, Josh. Hello. So glad to finally meet you. You as well. I thought I met you the other day via email. I got a funny story for you about that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Josh has uh, been set to be our new <laughs> Recreation Director. Watch just a little bit about yourself. I can start just throw just um, through the rec race recreation director search. We had about 25 applicants, and I think there was a pretty clear consensus from the rec director search committee that Josh stood right out. He's certified, comes with years of director experience, and um, just thrilled to have him in, in town. Um, he's up on the second floor with Jody and I, and he's already been a great fit and. Already working on a host of projects, so just happy to have you in town. Thank you. Yeah, I showed up here on December 20th from Northwest Colorado. Uh, two cars, two dogs, two kids, 2,400 mile drive. Um, was, Why would you move from Colorado to Burke, Maine? I knew that was coming because of the opportunity and then the school district. Opportunity and school district on top of each other. You like the school district here? You research it for your kids? Here, yeah. yeah. It was different in Colorado. Yeah, so we had a, a K through twelve school with four hundred and thirty kids total. I live K in a through twelve. Yeah, they wow. just built a brand new sixty three million dollars school K through twelve. Oh, wow! And you would think that with that would come um, high end school administration, and in in our opinion, it, it did not. Um, I'm glad you checked it out. It was, it was like a brand new school. Brand new. Yeah, that's from the ground up. That's always the rough twelve in one school. Yeah. Uh, brand new schools, that's always that's always a gamble. Sometimes yeah. you, there's a lot of growing pains, you know, when they first start out. So this opportunity came. Uh, we wanted to give our kids a better opportunity. Athletics, academics, socializing, more people. We, we lived in a town of 2,000 people. No stops, no stoplights, no restaurants. You'd get your food from the gas station. Uh, you'd have to go 30 minutes east or west. We were right next to Steamboat, big tourist town. So we're familiar with that when that happens here. Um, but you got to the point where you just didn't want to go to Steamboat. Mm. So and we, you're planning this on being a long-term yeah. job? Yes, sir. When, you know, just yep. don't want to have yeah, I've never been to this region, so I've got probably a lifetime of exploring to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, we just like to keep it around to, for a few years. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. You, you came from Alabama originally? So that's where I spent 30 years uh, until 2017, just uprooted the family. Um, in less than a month, we interviewed, my wife interviewed for a job on July 2nd. She accepted the job on July 5th. We arrived on August 17th. And what year was that? 17. Mm. In Colorado. Yeah, it took them five years to say, yeah, this is not it. <laughs> we, loved, we loved the small town lifestyle. Um, and then it started to change. The pandemic really changed it. Yeah, I bet. Uh, yeah, um, and the lack of opportunity, I would think, too, being such a small. Yeah, we had 
the closest uh, target was three and a half hours away. I'm just speaking for my wife right now. <laughs> <laughs> Colorado's got a lot of pot places too. It does. Shops. We're, yep. we're, you're in good shape here. Bro. We only had we one. Got, we got plenty. <laughs> It's a green state. Steamboat had several. Uh, our town yeah. finally finally agreed Bless to putting you. one in on the west side of town. Ah. So we, and then Craig, which was even further west, um, I think they had three or four. Yeah. How far out of Denver are you? Let's four. Try. Four hours. Four hours into the, it, it, where, west? East. East into the mountains then, right? Yeah, so you go through the mountains, yeah. you go up Eisenhower Pass, yep. and that's up at about 11,000 feet, so... You don't really want to travel that six months out of the year. No. I was out there a couple of years ago during the wildfires up there. Yeah. Taking a look at it. We had a nice summer this last summer. No fires. Yeah. That was before that. Had a that. couple hundred thousand acres burned the yeah. summer before. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so coming coming to Berwick is, you know, the opportunities for your family and everything. What are the opportunities you see for the recreation department? I see the field, the Memorial Park, uh, the, the potential for that park with the the money that's going to get spent there, the upgrades that are going to happen there. I see that kind of, I keep calling it the golden nugget for the town, but I see that, that open green space recreationally uh, with some upgrades to the turf to be a long-term uh, benefit yeah. to the town, especially with the playground, the basketball, yeah. the pickleball, tennis, batting cages. Um, there's work to be done there for sure. And uh, besides, besides the work at Memorial Park, what do you envision for you know, other activities that the, the recreation, you know, can offer. So not, not just to the, the the young people, particularly in the organized sports, but other things for, you know, everybody else in town rather than just the, the kids in the organized sports. That's something that I've got to dive into. I've really been, in my six days that I've been here, I've been focusing on what we do. Um, so I haven't really had a lot of time to, like, change my direction to look at something new. So I'm focusing on this last couple of weeks on what's next, which would be Easter. And then what's next after that is the big animal of summer camp. Um, and then the turf management, which is the feasibility report that I've been spending a lot of time in um, for the turf at the park. So I don't have- That's a good week long read. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough yeah. read, yeah. Uh, so to follow up with that, how much experience do you have with running a, a summer, because we have, a, a pretty robust summer camp here i that that's one thing that um i've i i was a one-man show in hayden so i've i've done all the organizing of the youth program so we the ages that we deal with here in this program are the same ages that i dealt with there so registrations i've never we didn't have a summer camp so i'm not going to lie to you there we i've never organized uh, a summer camp we just didn't have one yeah um so that's something that I'm jumping in feet first. <laughs> Did you go to school for this? I went to school for sports and fitness management. Yep, yep, yep. And then well, I, I think the good thing here is I think there's a. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't Sh Shannon's there, still running the summer camp too. Right, so running awesome. the summer camp, but isn't there also like a committee that's been doing different activities for the last couple of years? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, rec, yeah, the rec, rec committee meeting. Last right, night. so you have mm -hmm. a good support team to help you. It I won't do. be a one-man show. Right. right. Yeah, this is. A, I've never had this kind of help. I mean, we had a, a parks and recreation board. Uh, was also all volunteers, but I never had a Shannon, and uh, never had people that have been in the board for as, the time that some of these people on the commission have been in. And you call the, the the sports field a, a golden nugget? That's just music to my ears. Mm -hmm. It's just really yeah. good to hear that you think it's something. Yeah, I really want that grass to grow and oh yeah, support well, those good. kids. And and I want the grass to beat the cleats. <laughs> that's my goal. <laughs> well, we're also hoping to have you know expand it you know tom brought it up or touched on it a little bit is also is it is a golden nugget but not only for just the kids and the athletes but we're hoping for maybe some walking paths for some of our seniors right. as well yep. um, and give them an opportunity to also use that resource mm -hmm. i just think about that there's so much work that's going to be done on that, that field over the next couple down. of years just like this there's, uh, <laughs> there's just so much going to be going on yep no. and um so you feel up to the challenge? I do. I, I had a, a six-acre uh, open space. We had multi-purpose fields that I managed, 400-plus sprinklers, irrigation system that we uh, pumped out of a pond. So luckily that water wasn't charged to the town. We had water rights, which is a huge... You, uh, do, you, do you understand irrigation systems yourself? <sighs> yes and no. I had a park supervisor who was the guy that got the finger 
fingers dirty. Was it a hunter system? It was a... Rainbird? We did hunter sprinklers, sprinkler heads. Rainbird. Gosh, Hunk. the box is gray and, pur and purple. I can see it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just losing that's it. That's hunter. The box, would be, if it's box, gray's box, that's a hunter box. Gray and purple on the box, so it was a hunter system. Um, it did have a remote control to it, but that was difficult to... Because we we'd be half a mile away when we'd have to turn it on. Right. So we didn't have it on our phones. We were uh, over there and set the we were up in the process of upgrading a smart rain, yep. but the, that park had too many uh, sprinklers to be able to handle the the current system that they had. We're not in bad shape over there for irrigation, are we? It sounds like there was a pretty significant upgrade. I'm, yeah, I actually have a call with Ian tomorrow. Yeah, Ian. I've got yeah. a lot of questions for him. Yep. Who is it? Ian, Ian Lacey. Yeah. Who's he? The guy who's uh, just doing all the turf farm. Um, the the the, the, the Tom, the Tom Irwin. He's, well, the, he, he's one of the British accent, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. He'll, talk to you, he'll, talk to you He'll talk to you plenty. <laughs> he was in the UK when I called him on Monday. <laughs> That's what we use for the irrigation, is summer rain? Smart rain. Uh, smart water? No, James, you're signing the checks. What, who is I don't, it? I don't, I'd have to get back to you on that one. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Hang on, sorry. Yeah, I'll come and see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. So I got an email from you. Really? Yeah, on Thursday of last week. Yeah, so oh. Oh, did you? Yeah. It said, I need to speak to you. I need you to handle something discreetly. Oh, You get those from Tom all the yeah, time. So I used to be the chair, so they always used to come from me for some reason. So I don't send emails. I didn't know you from Adam's house, cat. So I'm sneaking around going, does anybody know a guy know him? No. That's, That's awesome. insane. <laughs> yeah, I've been getting those emails from him for six years. Yeah. Where it's, yeah. it's like, hey, I need your help with something. And then I, the first time I got one, I was like, what do you need? Yep. And it's like, I need you to go and buy like two hundred dollars worth of yep. gift cards. <laughs> yep. And and I'm like, I'm like, this Change does not sound <laughs> like something that Tom would send to me. So I, I let him read it. And he's like, there's no way no would talk like really that through that. email. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 definitely uh, not. No it's probably like, it's I, I probably like, Tom it's probably my time. email address, but with like a zero yeah. instead of an O. Yeah, you know? yeah, it comes once a month. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no. That is, that is, no. Yeah. That's, awesome. That's funny. I think, I think it was Lisa Vargas who got one supposedly from me saying I need you to check for like $1,200 yeah. and don't yeah. tell anybody. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what it is. Yeah. I need you to buy a bunch of gift cards, but don't tell nobody about it. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, sure. How many people do we have on the summer? Rec thing for what? attendance, yeah. I think we we're talking about it was 40 40, uh, 40 kids, 62. Kids? That's it. 62? 60, 57 60? to 62. Because I want to say that the revenue generated was about 62,000, yeah. yeah. And that was roughly 925 to 1025 for the for fees, per, per for 60, yeah. 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 It's about it's about a thousand dollars per, per kid to go mm. through, depending. For, is that for, good? For a whole that's summer. good? For a whole summer. Yeah. And, and not knowing the region and only being here for six, I think it's high. I think it's Honestly, a high fee. It's, it's not, it's not well, really. Welcome to I mean, <laughs> when, I, when I went to summer camp when I was a kid, it was like $250 a week. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, that was a full six days, but was not that day. Rec? But, you know, that's. Right, that's, no, that's staying in cabins. Yeah, yeah, right. How old are you? 12 you and up. 7. Yeah, you're talking about like six weeks. There was a camp yeah. 500 bucks across the lake. Okay. They charged $3,000 for two weeks. That's a bunch of kids. Okay. So it is what. Pretty normal. Yeah, it's. That's. Yeah. My only problem, and my wife, well, my wife's problem as well, is just like with the summer camp program is like. We, you know, we do things during the summer. We would like to, uh, like our daughter to do like, like a week of summer camp. Mm -hmm. But there really wasn't an option for that, you know. It's, it's like, it's kind of an all or nothing situation. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't expect you to make major changes in this first year trying to get get your head around it and get it off its feet and everything like that, you know. But, like, that's the only complaint that I have with the summer camp situation. Is like, but, but beyond that, there's lots of kids. That you, they all have a great time. You know, it's a lot of stress, especially for their director. Mm -hmm. So, um, you can more than welcome to contact our previous directors and talk to them about it. I'm sure they'd love to fill you in on the, but there's on the a lot stress. Of, there's a lot of positivity. I mean, oh, it's, my, I yeah. sent my granddaughter to the camp here the last couple of years, and it's phenomenal between what they do back and forth, um, the staff that she's had, hired, mm -hmm. you know, which are, I think they're teenagers or whatnot. The college helping. kids, a lot of College time. kids, yeah. 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 But just, um, you know, and being, you know, five and six, 
It's just they, they do a good combination of things that are right there to athletic to, um, you know, bringing people in for public mm-hmm. shows, things like that. So it's pretty well-rounded. Oh. And then if your kid can't go because you're going to do a family trip that week, you know, you can work something out that, that way. But I've always heard very positive things from people who sent their kids there that it, it is a really good camp. Um, it's run well, and, um, you know, the counselors have been really excellent. So I think you're you're coming off on something that is on solid footing. I will you know, which try is not good to booger to it up. <laughs> yeah. Any further questions? Any questions for us? What is your expectation of the board? I That's to be determined. I don't know. I've got a meeting with Mike. Um, we'll probably... Well, I got a whole bunch of stuff for you, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, that'll be a valuable meeting mm-hmm. to see what the expectations are and what sort of uh, support I get. Um, well, we will support you as much as we possibly can. <clears throat> right. Because, you know, that's that's our job, and that's, you know, we want to make sure that you're successful so that the town is successful. Um, last year, a, you know, we spent a lot of time doing our best to support the, part, the rec director mm-hmm. against, uh, I should say, not spurious, but, you know, unnecessary criticism that mm-hmm. she was getting at the time for doing as much as she possibly could, but for, in some people's eyes, not being doing enough, you Fast know. Enough. And, um, but, yeah, like, uh, as, uh, it's one of those things where it's like when it's running smooth, you know, we don't hear from you very much, mm-hmm. you won't hear from us very much, you know. So when we start having to, you know, hit those road bumps that we have to start, you know, getting back together again and, yep. and iron them out. So The town, I think, as a whole, even before Mike and I got here as a whole, the town has always been very supportive of mm-hmm. community recreation. So if you've got new ideas or things like that, please don't hesitate to bring it to the board. Correct. Um, because the board itself has been very supportive of the rec department yeah. here in Berwick. Every every meeting we have a spot for 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 report, uh, reports of committees and departments. You're welcome to show up every two weeks and give us a report if you want to, I or once a that. month, or once every three months. I think you're supposed to go through James first, though, right? First step. Is it James? You got the other. Well, I mean, he he, he reports yeah, directly to, to James. James, James, James is directly yeah. for it. He right. needs to but, get on the agenda. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. on the agenda and all that. But it, in in any case, you know. We, we would love to hear from you as often yeah. as you as you like, um, you know, uh, and we'll, the town really does support rec as much, a yes. lot. A lot of people are highly invested in it. Some would say too invested sometimes, but um, yeah, uh, and, and we did a study years ago, I think it was under, we either did it under Envision or James did it, and one of the questions was about rec and People were very supportive of more rec. They wanted more programs. They wanted mm-hmm. more interaction through the town, through re- uh, the recreation department. Um, you know, and sadly, we haven't been able to do as much as we want because, you know, we Money. pay for it. <laughs> See, we still got to pay for it at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, we're, we, we definitely want a strong rec program, and, and we'll support it in every way we can. And talking mm-hmm. about support is uh, the next group following you in tonight's agenda, the Envision Berwick. I don't know if you've dealt with them directly yet. Or... Dealt with them? Yeah. <laughs> it is, uh, what are we talking about here? Is, I have met them. <laughs> yeah. It is. They, 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 they have been very supportive of everything the yeah. recreation department has done. You know, and, uh, all the time that you know, the Envision Berwick has been going forward, and that's been one of the things they've been working is, is tying in all those activities together so that you'll be getting a lot of support on that side too. So. And I know you're upstairs with Jody and I know Jody's very supportive of rec, you know, parks and rec that way and, and mm-hmm. trying to be involved that way and, and he'll be a good good right hand person to lean on to. So mm-hmm. and if you need something facilities wise, <laughs> yeah make sure you make sure you let him know and I'm sure he'll he'll find a way to help you. Very good. Yep. Any other comments or questions? Welcome aboard. I will entertain a motion then. Because we have to actually appoint them. Oh, I make a motion that we appoint Josh, with Josh's last name? Jones. 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 But I just remember that. Josh Jones <laughs> to the position of rec director for the town of Broadway. Second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Yeah. Welcome aboard. Thank you all yeah. for the opportunity. 
Our condolences. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> good night. Good night. Have a good night. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to Berwick. Thank you. Yes. I'll see you in the Welcome to town. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, next we have the appointment of basically the entire Envision Berwick crew. Yeah. Well, not the entire. There's, there's about 14 of them. Yeah. 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 I think Cyrus is going to come in and see you. Okay. Well, uh, we have Jeremy Caston. Who is that? No. Um, Marie Miller, Al- Elise Weeks, and Cyrus Morgan. So. They're all reappointments. Yes. Yeah. These are all re-ups. For two years. So, um, is there anything you guys want to say? Yeah, exactly. Well, they're we giving a presentation. We, 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 we got plenty to say yeah. coming up, so I don't want to take up any okay. time other than to say I think I speak for all of us that that we love, we truly love what we do and what we say. Microphone, oh, these guys. <laughs> now it feels like I'm starting the presentation. That's good. Everybody who's kind of involved in Envision yeah. <laughs> loves it, and that's an amazing thing to have a group of people who are all. You know, we've all met doing this, right? And we've formed right. friendships and bonds. But most importantly, we, we're we really proud of the mountains. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, you guys did this before us. So it's we're continuing in a, um, a, a to blaze trails here. And it's cool because, like, you know, you guys saw how big Bring Your Lawn Chairs to Sullivan Square was. It was, oh, it was a big to-do. And at one point, we looked around... And I think the, there were six of us standing together and we went, wow, the six of us basically did this. I mean, we got a lot of funding from, you know, sponsorship. But in the end of the day, it's a, a couple people can move mountains. And, and that is one of the um, one of the things that I think we all find really satisfying, if I could speak to the group. How do you do? Nailed it. Marie? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we need to do an individual or can we do a block? Yeah, and I, and I know Cyrus isn't here, but I mean, the work yeah. that he's put into the group, too. I mean, I have no yeah. problems no kidding. moving forward yeah. with that at this as well. So. Yeah. I'll make it a, mo- a motion to appoint Jeremy Caster, Marie Miller, Elise Weeks, and Cyrus Morgan to two year terms to Vision Berwick Committee. I'll second it. Any further discussion? I just want to make a comment is, you know, is. It's funny because uh, Nicole Fecto put a post out this morning about nine years ago. We were sitting around talking about what to do, and here we are. And mm-hmm. it is amazing. Okay. Is you know, is I remember those nine years ago, and you know, everybody was saying, everybody else was saying about that group is, oh, it's just another one of those groups that's going to come and go. But um, is that initial group? They got things going. You know, I have to credit Frank Underwood and Pat and Paul Bovea. You know, Jessica and yeah, Jessica, Jen, yeah. Ser- Serena. Serena. Yeah. You know, is uh, those type of people that were there in the beginning. Um, but the thing I've seen with the Inversion Brewer and being involved off and on peripherally mm-hmm. over these years is that so there's happens, always maybe. somebody new willing to step yeah, forward. I think that's really good and really take good. it on. Yeah. And the thing and that impressed me, paid, right? the thing, the <laughs> yeah. thing that has really impressed me is you no, know, it's been a younger generation yeah. that I'm used to, and most of them are people that chose to move to Berwick for a reason. They weren't born here, they didn't come here because you no, know, something required them. They came here because they wanted to come here, and that's the thing I see with the Envision Berwick is that they, they want to make the town that much better, and you know, I, I have no problem. No support and everything you guys have been doing. And preserve the reasons that we loved it to begin with. Right. Right? You know, right. make it better, but not come in and change everything. There's a reason that you right. pick, you don't pick Berwick, Maine, because you wish you lived in Reno. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, or, or Hayden, Colorado, we just yeah, heard. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and um, just, just to second that, or piggyback on that, and I know I've been bad at popping up meetings lately, um, but every time I popped into an Envision Berwick meeting or seen you guys out, on, on the ground it's that passion and that energy and it's every idea it's like it's exciting or new and, and no matter how tired you guys are getting from working through it to get some launchers Solomon square off and and you know it seeing the volunteer work 
we know that it's got to be physically and mentally driven, and you guys never show it. There's always that passion, that energy that's there that just brings the town together, and it's a huge, huge blessing to see from from this end of it or from being in town or seeing my kids go through it, and, and really thank you to all of you guys and what you do all the time. So More to and, come. And I, and I promise I'll get back in the meeting soon. <laughs> <laughs> it has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? All right. That's thank you all. Reappointments. Thank now, you. Berwick's brand rollout progress report from Envision Berwick. So who's speaking? Who's doing that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, those Envision Berwick people again, jeez. <laughs> Some, uh, supplementary to that, I just went, your, your enthusiasm is always so refreshing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, you always, you're always enthusiastic about the work that you're doing, yeah. and it's, uh, it's, it is just amazing. Well, it's not my day job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not always enthusiastic about my day job. <laughs> Thanks, I try to be, but I'm yeah. going to try to keep it up. Hi. Hi. Am I on this side? I stay on the right side. Yeah, I need to. Good deal. I'm just... Hi guys. So we have a um, we've been working toward. So then I got to join. Yeah. Oh, join. All right. I don't want to join the computer audio, right? I don't think so. No, no audio. No, no mic. It sure sounds a thought. That's what she just yeah. asked. Yes. I just muted you. Correct. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it gets out really strange. All oh, that weird echo. <laughs> Well, she might even get the feedback. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah she'd be able to share, share your screen. Could just have Marie do it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, there. There. No problem. When do I get business cards? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure, you can ask Pat. I'm joking. I'm sure, Pat. I have, have my own business cards. <laughs> no, I have enough that I don't need. I don't need different ones. I've, I've, had, I've had business cards for like 13 years at this point. I first made my own. I was just like, you know, sales associate. But whatever, you know. So, well, if you want to introduce yourself, do you want to yourself? start with the intro? Oh, okay. So, well, while well, Luis is dialing us in. I will start by introing myself, which I feel like I've done for all of you at one point or another, but just to set the table again, as you said, Tom, I'm not from Berwick and very much intentionally moved here with my family almost seven years ago. I left a life in Los Angeles where I worked in entertainment and made TV and movies and sat in my car for three hours every day and paid other people to pick my kids up and take them to daycare and... Um, and I was miserable, and I wanted to farm. I wanted to um, homestead at least and raise food for my family and um, raise children who are stuck on tablets and climb trees and walk in chicken shit, pardon me, <laughs> chicken poo. And, and I, so that's we, we moved to Maine to uh, learn to homestead in, uh, in, in uh, uh, Harpswell, Maine, where we lived for a year. Uh, and learned to split wood and kill chickens and all this stuff. And fell in love with our farm in Berwick and fell in love with Berwick. Came back for nine months and wooed Nancy Fulton into selling me that farm, which is where I live with my family. And, um, and we are slowly renovating that almost 200-year-old property. So it's a, it's a big lift. I'm now working back in TV um, because of the pandemic. My background in... Los Angeles was very focused on marketing for movies, so I marketed big studio movies while I made my passion projects. All of this to set the table to say, when I came to, in, to Envision Berwick, to uh, initially to set up Bring Your Lawn Chairs to Sullivan Square, when it didn't have a name, and it was an idea that Ruth Blue had, um, I knew that I could bring my energy and my enthusiasm, but also a certain amount of um, expertise to Envision Berwick, in addition to, to what else had already been happening. So, 
Elise and I became friends through Envision Berwick, and now I'll let her give her a yeah. I I set this up. I think I've met pretty much all of you, but just in case not, I'm Elise Weeks. I live here in Berwick. Um, I run a graphic design shop called uh, Pixels and Pulp, which I've owned since two I started, I co founded that with my business partner in 2008, but I've been doing graphic design for about 20 years. Um, and like we've been talking about, I, I'm not from here, but I chose Berwick when we bought our house here in 2011. Um, and we love it here. We wanted to put down roots here because of the schools, because of the land, um, because of what's going on here, the kind of distance we've got. We're near the mountains, we're near the ocean, we can get to cities pretty quickly. So we just, when I was shopping for my home, I, when we found the house that we were going to live in, it's on this amazing, we're kind of butted up against a 75-acre piece of land, and we have this crazy view, and it was not something I thought would be possible. So it was amazing to first come to Berwick and realize that, like, my first home purchase ever was in this amazing place. And since becoming involved with Envision Berwick, it's just, yeah, I've made incredible friends, and we've since had a daughter, and we've just really enjoyed our time here, and it's been amazing. So, um, yeah, but for my professional life as a graphic designer, um, we kind of do all different aspects of branding. We do branding, we do website design, print, a little packaging, uh, we do print design, things like that. Um, we have clients locally, we've done work for Mr. Fox, um, UNH, we have kind of higher ed clients, we work with nonprofits, we work with organizations that kind of do um, social justice, environmental, um, things like that. So we're really just kind of passionate about working with organizations and um, nonprofits, towns that are kind of just working to make the world a better place. So, um, yeah, that's kind of why we're here. We we love Berwick, obviously, but we really wanted to kind of come in here and um, actually it was Serena who was really sort of like the, the catalyst for, for bringing me in. Um, I think she kind of, we met previously through, you know, I think I did a talk in Summersworth about branding actually and um, I think she, over the course of meeting us and seeing our skills, thought we could kind of come and bring those to apply to Berwick and help improve the town here. Um, specifically, originally it was for a community engagement project, but also, you know, maybe helping with the branding, economic development, all of that kind of stuff. So just to do like a quick recap, and I apologize, I'm using my paper notes here just because the way we've got this set up, <laughs> so I'll be refer referencing those a little bit because we do have a lot to cover tonight, and we'll try and get us out of here as quickly as possible, but um, just to do a quick recap of what is branding. So a lot of times people sort of think, oh, it's our logo, but it's, it's a lot more than that. It's sort of like the way um, we're perceived by the pe people who experience it, whether it's a product, whether it's a company, an individual, a town. Um, so there's a lot of different sort of expressions of that brand, the logo being one of them. It's our, you know, the typefaces we use, the colors we use, our signage, our town website, the graphics on our town vehicles. It's how we talk about ourselves. It's the experiences we have. So our summer concerts, that's a piece of our brand. It's, you know, when people come to town hall and they engage with folks, that's all part of our brand. I also want to say something about that. I think the term brand has like, it's got a, it sounds so like, it's weird to talk about our town that's like, you know, charming. Like that's the whole thing about Berwick, right? That's what, we, that's why we moved here. Mm -hmm. To talk about it in these ways that where you'd say a brand. It sounds kind of gross. But actually, what's important, and this is why I said preserving what we love about it, what's important for Envision Berwick and for us in, in talking about Berwick and talking about it in these terms is to retain, right? It's not to change, it's not to come in and like say this is, the, we're gonna change everything. It's to be like, here's what's great. So if you look at the signs, just I know this is slightly tangential, but nope. if you look at the signs and the way they look, they the new signs, right? The new with the mm -hmm. Berwick and Maine, and it looks like a postcard yeah. or whatever. Yeah. The function of it is to be like, this is, this is, you have a sense of place, it feels authentic, and it's, and it, and it isn't like, it doesn't look like a sign for Reno, right? It looks like a sign for Berwick. That's what good branding is. So I just wanted to like... Yeah, that, that that's here. a good segue just because, I mean, that's we're very passionate about this stuff. We feel that it, this is very important. Having a cohesive system <coughs> is important because it just sort of elevates the perception of our town and the experiences that people have here. And that it shows that we care. 
So we want it to be a reflection of who we are and who we aspire to be. Berwick is in an incredible moment right now with everything that's happening at the edge. Like we just have this like downtown that's sort of like it's starting to come up and it's already starting to happen. I think we're putting, you know, really good people in place to make stuff happen. But like you were saying, we all are here for a reason. We don't want to just come in guns a blazing and change everything about it. We want to preserve, we live in a rural community. We love that about it. We don't want it to feel like our light, you know, the sign is like this blinking crazy thing. We have a message board basically on our sign where we go down and we change out the messaging on it and it just feels really charming and special. Authentic. Right. And ultimately, we want this to be a place that people feel pride in and encourage new people to move here, encourage businesses to come here. When they come over the bridge and they see our sign, they think, oh, wow, that's really special. And, you know, from every touch point that they have with our brand, that comes through. So tonight, really what this is, is just to kind of give a, a recap of, we, we've done a lot. <laughs> we kind of came on board around 2019 um, to start this process. So this is really like a where we've started, where we are now, and where we're going from here. So um, this slide right here is basically just to kind of give us a little bit of um, a little background on where we came from. So, and also to acknowledge like all of this, you know, just kind of the hours and the time and the love that went into all of this, they all have their unique places. But when you look at all this, so in 2019, this was our website on the left. There's some pictures of our, you know, the signs we used to have. And then a kind of a, a bunch of different logos that are used for the town. And I should say that Berwick didn't really have a logo. So we kind of had a type treatment on our website. We had, you know, a little bit of different treatments on our signage. And then we had our town seal. So we didn't really have a brand at all. Um, and each kind of department within the town kind of feels like its own thing. There's not like a unifying theme kind of connecting everything together. So the first phase of the website, we started with the logo. That was the logical place to start. So this is what we came up with in 2019. So we started with our logo, and then we also have um, our town emblem, which is on the right that has our town motto on there, where tradition meets tomorrow. And we preserved our town seal, but we did um, update the typeface on there to match our new system's um, font. It looks, it looks cleaner. I think it's yeah, um, yeah, yeah, like it goes, more readable. goes with the other one because it's got the same. Yeah. yeah, I think the original logo, I mean, it's it's sort of like a picture and then, just, you know, photocopied a few times. So, like, in, it's the integrity <laughs> of it kind of, you know, after 50 degraded years, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like said, after 50 years of photocopies, got, got messed yeah. up a little bit. There's no yeah. longer a circle. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> the first few years was really, you know, starting our stationery with the business cards. Um, kind of updating, doing a little bit of a rescan of our website with our town colors, our few, first few signs. I don't have great pictures of the signs on Routes 9 and 236, but we did those as well. It's because nobody wants to stop and take those pictures and yeah. risk their life. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 236. Um, so we did some merch. We did, you know, T-shirts, onesies, hoodies, some stickers. Um, all this was launched. Um, the logo was at the, the first launch airs that we had in 2019. 2019. Um, another big part of this, which shout out to Marie, um, major overhaul of our social media presence. So she and I kind of got together. Um, she's a phenomenal photographer and is really great. So we adopted a, it's called an app called Canva, which many of you have probably already heard of, but basically <laughs> it's sort of a design app that's a web-based tool. And so we got in there, um, I developed a bunch of templates that you can see, so for like the car show. Um, for REC, we have the, um, the litter cleanup, for voting, for our business profiles. Um, Farm Animal Friday. Farm Animal Friday, Open Farm Day, historical posts. So basically, the effort here was just to kind of like, again, when you go to our Instagram or our, our Facebook and you go through the feed, the quality of the photos is really much improved. But also, we wanted to develop a system of templates so that if you saw a particular post that had type on it, like for the farmer's market or whatever, it all feels like Berwick. Consistent use of color, consistent use of text. Again, it's just kind of all carrying the same theme through everything that we're doing. Um, so the next phase, sort of like 2021, 2022, we really start to build momentum. Um, 
And just a shout out to Jeremy because I feel like you've had a lot of incredible ideas and have been able to sort of connect people together to kind of make a lot of this stuff happen. This is one of them. Um, so communication is definitely a thing in town that we are, it's a work in progress. One of the things that we heard when, you know, there were community surveys done in like 2013, I think. Um, but this is a thread that I think we're all very familiar with. So something we experimented with was doing a print publication called the Berwick Quarterly, which was essentially like uh, a big town calendar um, that also, it was sort of somewhere between like a magazine and a newsletter kind of ish sort of, um, and then the, the town calendar. But this, you know, incorporated like not just what's happening in the town, but also sort of special features that are very uniquely Berwick. And please jump in on this. Well, so I, I want to say the, the because the social media also promoted, you know, was letting people know about stuff that was happening with rec or letting people, but not everybody is on social media. And we heard right. that a lot. We do have a, 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 an older population here that doesn't use the internet. And so a, a, an attempt to solve that was this every door direct mail piece that four times a year could come into people's mailboxes, and it came with its own complications. But but I do think that it that it further like if a business wanted to move to the edge and was looking at at, at you know doing a giant build out, being able to say, look, here's Berwick, and have these pieces that we hand out that that tie into the look of the website and tie into the business cards, and and it all feels like it's part of a, a system. I think that even though it wasn't affordable to continue to do it. It still is great to have those because they're, they they fit in with something that elevates the town in the right direction. Would it be more affordable to do it like twice a year? I don't know. I mean, I think that's just another conversation because Tom at the, at the screening at the library, you know, was like, what can we do to keep this going? I think that it's a great conversation and I, we spend more time out of our week than I probably spend looking for my next gig talking about this. It's really important to us to, because it's important to the town. It's important to people. But but yeah, let's let's have a further conversation about that because it's a good question. Um, also last year, we kind of uh, developed a few more merch products. We did some new t-shirts, some new knit hats, caps, an enamel mug, which was really exciting, um, some new stickers. And one of the major improvements was that we were able to move this entire inventory into an online store using a square point of sale system. So that was huge. Um, and just shout out to our finance department and our town clerks for helping us make that happen because um, we still have volunteers that help kind of come to town hall and fulfill the inventory so people can pick them up. But this made it possible for us to not only track our orders, um, we have this really crazy system at the first launch years where we were like, analog clipboard checking off inventory i was like doing math in my head while people were standing there waiting for change it was very inefficient but now <coughs> with this we can actually um have a booth at the farmer's market so we've done that a couple of times and um at our concerts we can just kind of people can come up use their cards um or they can order online and then we just fulfill them so that was a really nice um, are we shipping we don't ship so we we have a system now where it's sort of a weekly fulfillment um schedule where we kind of alternate volunteers that will come kind of go through the whole you know all the orders for the week package them up and then we leave them with the town clerks and then people can just come in and pick them up pick so them it's up. yeah that's good it's great i want to mention too that we sold over five thousand dollars in 2022 of really? merch yeah and in terms of shout outs we should give a shout out to Devin dupes who yes. partners with us on all that apparel and they actually do all the runs and then we we you know they, we they have been very generous in working with us on this merch yeah that's been awesome um so just a couple other quick um updates from last year we kept building on the stationary system so now all the town letterhead matched with business cards and you know, there's three different variations of this depending on the type of correspondence. So there's sort of just like general correspondence and then we've got sort of the more official and then the one from the town manager's office. Um, just a couple little like so sub good. projects that <laughs> happened. So last year, um, some of our big events, Open Farm Day. This, while it's not like, you know, all of the Berwick branding, it's very much in keeping um, with the Berwick brand. So it feels like us um, kind of using some of the typography, some of our colors. 
um, and then lawn chairs, same kind of thing. It's got very much its own look and feel, but just like the, the larger system that we're developing for the town, this one kind of has its own as well. And so every kind of thing that you um, kind of interact with with this event, whether it's the stage, social media, the pole banners, the shirts, everything is its own system. So that's kind of what we we've been up to. <laughs> so over the past year, now we're kind of backing up a little bit and we're thinking about, okay, what's the next step in this process? So to do that, the first piece of this was kind of getting into the weeds on developing, you know, just for our understanding of knowing the, the full hierarchy of how the town is structured, all the entities that fall within that, the departments, kind of all the levels within that. So we kind of just, we worked with James to kind of come up with this um, so we can look ahead and kind of see where we need to go from here just to really get organized and, and have a full understanding of all of those pieces. So the earlier slide that we showed of all the different things, the website, the signage, and all the different kind of logos where there wasn't quite you know, a, a unified system here. Our goal is to kind of move towards something like this. Just gonna caveat this with this is not a finished set yet. Some of the things at the bottom here are a little more conceptual, but starting from the top. Totally conceptual. These, I mean, are, these are not like ready to go on people's t-shirts yet. Right. This is like a pitch document that's saying that there will be a time where there are. Yes, lots system. of conversations still have to happen, but basically I wanted to kind of visualize just so we can kind of wrap our minds around what the goal would be. So at the top, those are our official marks. We have an adopted, our emblem, and our logo. And then beneath that for a rec department, public works, and kind of entities that fall under that, these would all incorporate, you know, kind of a variation of our town emblem so they kind of all go with the system. I don't know, can you guys read them from there? The mm -hmm. ones on secondary? Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, and we'll, we can share this PDF around too afterwards too, if that will be helpful. But eventually the goal is to kind of, you know, we're all part of the same team here. <laughs> team Berwick. So basically when we have, we love to talk with the police department and the fire department and the library and sort of envision Berwick, special committees, special projects, things that kind of warrant their own brand, sub-brand, but have it feel like it's all part of this cohesive, I feel like I sound like a broken record, but I am because it's very important. <laughs> um, having that consistency, having that kind of unifying system um, so that, you know, it has that sort of brand recognition, it has that familiarity. This is actually already in progress. So the Department of Parks and Recreation, they've already adopted their emblem. This is already on their social channels. Um, over here on the right, so we, we had talked about earlier, we do offer some, a lot of times we share what people are already doing. So Marie, you know, she's doing her social updates. She'll kind of share things in stories on Instagram, but there are sort of key things that we help actually develop the artwork for um, as they warrant them. So the Easter egg hunt's a big event that REC does. The townwide litter cleanup. So we kind of help develop the graphics for that. The camp t-shirts the staff shirts, so those all kind of incorporate um, the town branding. So this is kind of already up and running. We'll continue to support REC. Um, looking forward to meeting with Josh and kind of going over this stuff with him. So he's kind of on board with, with what's happening already. Um, and then the same with, basically right now, we're working with Public Works in the same capacity. So um, we actually just delivered the jackets for the, for the folks at the t nice. uh, transfer station. So they've got nice new heavy Carhartt jackets for the winter that now have our official town emblem on it. Um, and then we're going to update all of, there's a couple new trucks. So this was a really good time to kind of work all of the, the town artwork onto the new trucks and then just make sure that those all follow suit as well. So these are just kind of visuals because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of projects. So this is just sort of a quick little breakdown to show like um, what's already been done. And I just want to note that the text is a little small here to see, but this is all calendar year. It's not forward's fiscal year. So this is kind of like what has been accomplished during calendar years. Um, so this past year, public works. And then moving forward in this calendar year, it will likely be Envision Berwick or potentially Berwick for a lifetime, which is another subcommittee. We're meeting with Sharon Kelly from the library, who's been amazing getting that subcommittee back up and running again. She's already doing wonderful things with that. 
So likely we'll be working with her on that. Eventually the library and safety and police. So, you know, we want to be really thoughtful about how we time all of this because we are working within specific budgets. We want to be really intentional about what we tackle each year so that we're staying on budget um, and prioritizing things as it makes sense. Um, for example, this year, um, or in 2022, we had planned to do the Envision Perfect logo, but because of the truck purchase for Public Works, it made sense to sort of pivot and focus on that and just kind of put that first on the, on the punch list. And same thing with signage. There's a bunch more signs we can do here in town. Um, the, we're working on the kayak launch right now, the sign for the transfer station that will be similar to what's downtown. It's such a high traffic area, so we want to do something where Again, we can kind of have like messaging to let people know what's going on. Soccer signups or, you know, farmer's market or whatever the kind of thing pertinent, you know, timely thing is going Vent on. Vent of the week. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Or when so the dump is going to be closed. Right. <laughs> yes. Right. Or bring your paint for yeah. yes. special yes. dangerous yes. chemical day. Totally. Yeah. So this will follow a, a plan <clears throat> as well over the next, you know, number of years. So this is what the printout is in front of you. I apologize. This is insane to look at on screen. <laughs> but really, this is just to show kind of a comprehensive view. Everything that's in green has already been done. Things that have a little orange dot next to it, that's in progress right now. We've got a lot on deck for this year. And then, again, we just want to kind of um, map out what we're doing for the next few fiscal years. And so that meeting is happening in two weeks. We are already working through all of that. Um, this is not set in stone. We kind of do our best to map all this out based on the budgets that we um, we will pitch a budget that we think that we need for the projects that we have. You know, we can kind of work through all that. But this gives us sort of a good framework so that we're not just kind of willy nilly doing whatever. Like we want to break this down by all of the projects that we think you know that need to be done, and then we focus on the ones that that. Um, also with intention as to the Correct. timeline and like for example the wayfinding sign in fact we obviously going to do a new town hall sign with a wayfinding you know um uh, kayak launch you know 0.2 miles this way and library 0.6 miles that way or whatever that you know but there's no point in doing that as we've discussed until we get some of this yep. dig a hole once stuff right. go, taken care of here because the traffic patterns and Things are going to change, so we're holding off on that. That's on the list, but it just doesn't make sense until we come up under that with all the work that's happening around here. Yeah, this table has changed like three times in the past week just because of conversations that we've had and things that we've been having to move around um, as we learn about things like that. So um, that's all very exciting. Um, we've done a lot, but like anything, there are some challenges. It hasn't always been super smooth sailing. Um, you know, nothing super crazy major, but, uh, you know, communication is definitely, can be a bit of a pain point sometimes. Um, you know, like you were saying, not everyone in town's on social media. Sometimes even when things are readily available, there's not always the initiative to go find it. Um, sometimes it feels like things are a bit siloed. You know, there's yeah. limited resources. You know, a lot of, um, you know, financial resources, human resources, people are, kind of volunteering part-time to do this outside of their actual jobs. Um, you know, but we, again, we try to, we feel really proud of all of the work that we've been able to do given some of the constraints that we have. Um, and this is new, like we're, we know that it's hard to do new things, yeah. um, but we want to help. We are really passionate about this stuff. We, because we wouldn't be here if we didn't think this was important. And we probably annoy people sometimes with how much we are like driving these points home, but we wanna be supportive as well because it is new and not, we don't understand, we don't think everyone, you know, has to understand how all of this stuff works out of the gate. So as we're developing new things, we wanna help develop new processes. So if someone does need to order a new sweatshirt or someone does need a new truck vehicle, Here's who you need to communicate with. Here's how we need to do that. So we're working on establishing those um, protocols so that it makes it really clear and easy so you guys can just stay focused on your own jobs and not have to worry about this, this stuff. And what, what logo? Where's the logo file? Like, don't even worry about that. Like, we will help you figure all of that out. Um, and, you know, just want to kind of acknowledge, like, the successes, the good stuff. So... <laughs> 
Um, after we sadly had to kind of pause on the Berwick quarterly, we did send out a survey, survey, albeit it wasn't like a huge pool of survey results. Um, there were probably about 24 respondents to that, but of the people that responded, overwhelmingly it felt like we we're, you know, it felt very valuable, that people felt more informed about what was happening. Um, like Jeremy was saying, we made over $5,500 in sales from our merch. Um, the Instagram following has more than doubled uh, since Marie took that over. Um, we know that the business spotlights and the Berwick stories that Jeremy produced, um, the incredible like video spots from, was it Hagmatak and Humblebee and um, Corner Point? Yeah, yeah, some of our local Corner businesses Point. and farms. Um, they're just really helping to build awareness and people are starting to notice. We now get asked, um, businesses reach out on the regular to the Envision Berwick email requesting to be featured because they, they're seeing the impact that it's having. And other towns are noticing what we're doing, um, which is really kind of cool. So we got approached by, I think, both Summersworth and the town of Yarmouth to do <laughs> requests for proposals to do branding in their towns. We do not have the capacity to do that, but I, it was just kind of validating to see that, like, oh, okay, like, people are noticing improvements that are happening here in Berwick. And yeah, don't they, leave us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Saying that your businesses have the capacity to take on another town's branding? Correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, our hearts are in Berwick too, so, uh, yeah, so this is just a quick screenshot of some of the, after we launched the Berwick Quarterly, we got, you know, some, there's a lot of negativity on Facebook, I think we all can realize that, but this was some refreshing, positive stuff, and it, this one in the middle was just really stuck out for me, because it just says, um, we asked to be informed and someone listened, so it's just kind of that reassurance that, you know, communication's a thing. People want to know what's going on. We did a thing. And they appreciated it. Yeah. Yes. You think there's a lot of negativity on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Why is that? I was having a discussion with somebody. Why is that? What's your point? just all negativity. I'm asking them. Well, yeah. What, what, what... Why is that? Do you have an opinion on why that is? Why why people are negative on Facebook? Oh, yeah, I you're asking. Why? I think <laughs> it's. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the same reason that you probably all, I would imagine, think. I think that it takes a lot more nerve to get up and say something here in a forum where yeah. you look people in the eye, or even over Zoom, than it does to write a nasty comment. And right, I think it's very cowardly to write something on Facebook. I mean, and and I know, we, it can be any number of things, but it's problem. you know, you're part of the problem. It also doesn't take any effort, right? It's right, very easy right. to just criticize. It's too bad. That's why... Or intelligence for many of them. The world is full of critics and very few people will make things. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we push through because I think that the work that's happening is worth doing and we feel that it's important and we love it. And I think overwhelmingly the response that we have heard has been way more positive than negative. Um, launch airs in particular was amazing. Just everybody that, awesome. that came up to our booth was just so psyched and just the vibe there was, it was magical. Um, I feel really lucky to have been part of that. Can I just say, as we get into next steps, to be really clear, this is not just, we think it would be nice if the town's colors are this and we want to change everybody's shirts and jackets and there is a very clear line from doing this work to bringing in money and it, just to look you in the eye and say in my heart of hearts and in elise's heart of hearts we truly believe that for berwick to get the tax base successfully that it needs that that the edge needs that that alex needs in his place across the street that that you know that that is the future doing it with intention is going to affect the outcome yeah. so much more than just kind of going, well, we hope this works out okay. And some of this sounds kind of lofty, talking about brand and colors, and it's really important that people use the right logo and don't change the font. But it's real. It's a real thing. It will deeply affect the perception of somebody who's considering opening a business here or moving here or just for our own personal pleasure of using a website that that runs perfectly and has a search bar and you know all of these things are part of that yeah 
to just make nice things look nice for the sake of doing that is pointless. We would not be doing that if there wasn't a strategy behind it. It's just you really, it, it really matters to make sure that there is a goal in place and to do all of this for that bigger goal. Um, yeah, so, so we're going to keep going. Um, so we're going to be presenting the budget later this month and prioritizing in that 2023 list in that massive crazy table um, what we're going to do next. And um, we want to kind of encourage there to be a community communication liaison to also help us keep effectively sharing information on a regular basis, sort of the next iteration of what the BQ, the Berwick quarterly was and whatever the next kind of phase of that is to be really effective. Um, and again, just helping to kind of develop the process for making sure that we really preserve the integrity of our brand um, and reduce confusion across departments and entities. Um, yeah. Yeah, keep the good vibes going so that there's full buy-in and everybody feels good about it. You know? It's yeah, not want, always easy, but it's important. We want people important. to feel proud and, you know, like a sports team or like a, yeah, <laughs> anything that kind of has that really cohesive feel. Um, we want that for Berwick, too. So thank you very much. I know that was, that was a lot, but thanks, guys. No, yeah. thank you. It's important. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. No, as, as I said earlier, is, you know, the, the work that in the Vision Berwick group has done over the last nine or ten years has been amazing and uh, as I said it, it just seems like you know as some of us you know move on and, and stop going is it always seems to be more people to step forward and uh, it really encourages me yeah. Yeah. and I think the uh, uh, in my honest opinion is when you first showed up with branding three years ago or whatever it was you know it felt to me like this would be cute. This would be fun. You know, we're going to get a new logo for the town. But, you know, it's a town thing. It's not really going to go much further than that, you know. And it, at every step, it's just grown and become better and more stabilized. And it looks it looks great, yeah. you know. So it's, it's definitely proved, you know, my inner monologue wrong just like because, like, I mean, like, I thought it looked great when it first came out, but I just, you know, I wasn't sure that it was going to make that much of a difference. But when you do see it on signs and on vehicles and on shirts, it and it, and it's, 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 it is more unified, you know, it, it not only does it look better, it gives, it, it does give a bigger sense of pride that it's a unified uh, force, you know, and it's, it's, it's great. I, re I I enjoy it, and I think it's really helping out the town. And you guys have put a lot of effort into it, which you know it, it's surprising to say. You think once you make the logo once, you don't have to do anything after that, but you guys really have put the effort into it as well to make it more known, to make it to put it out there. And it, I think it's yielding results. So no, it, and you know something that Jeremy said. That I, I think holds true is, um, you know, Sarah and I moved to uh, Berwick to uh, raise the family at the same time at least did. So, you know, kind of what was there, the, the school district and looking at it. But I remember two years ago sitting here with, with Linda and Rob and talking about what, what are we going to do to the edge and what are we going to do to bring in business. And, you know, as you talk about the brand of the town and you look at the signage and it's become more than just families looking at a nice town that's, that's close to the city that's going to be there. But then it's that tax revenue, that tax base. And now it's showing something that there is a community. Now businesses can see that, hey, this is what's really there. And this is a community that I might be successful moving into versus staying over the bridge in, in New Hampshire. And, and I, I think that's a piece that, um, well, was it the forefront or not, is going to be a, an underlying benefit that's going to become um, forward that I think we're going to see, you know, really a, a bigger benefit four, five, six years from now for what you guys have been doing the last four, five, six years and, and, and going forward. So I, I think that was, um, like I said, do it with intent, and, and you guys surely have, and, and thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, it, we're building a foundation right now. It, it takes a long time, and it, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. There's definitely, you know, it, it can feel like a slog sometimes, but we've if we do it intentionally, we keep saying that word, but it's true. Like if we just kind of really work toward having that um, 
a, a system that really feels fully developed because yeah, you can just make a logo and yay, and then it's out there. But then you end up kind of like with everybody's doing that. It's you know, if you were to, if you, the sports team analogy, if every player on a team had a different color and a different logo and a different thing, it's like it wouldn't feel like a team. So I feel like having something that really pulls us all together and every kind of touch point you have, whether you walk into the town hall or you come over the bridge or you get a business card or you go to the website or you see a snowplow go by or whatever, it's like, it just starts to permeate your brain and you just start, it just becomes part of our town's DNA. So that's that's the goal. Now how do I get a burrow cat for free? What do I do? Jeez. You got your check. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, um, anything else? That's it. We just, just wanted to fill you in on what yeah, we've been up to and where yeah, we're going. Yeah, we so look forward to hearing from you in the next month or so for budget stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Hanging out with us for the next two years. <laughs> <laughs> There's a GoFundMe page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Canadian. That's not helpful at all. All right, then moving along. Thank you. Um, yes. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks, Murray. Um, no unfinished business, town manager report. We've got a 97. Yeah, we got to set another appointment. 97 Freightliner from the fire department. Um, that's up for bid right now. $20,000 minimum bid. Submission deadline is January 23rd at 4 p.m. For more information, you go to the town website under business, RFP slash bid request. What kind of fire truck is it? Tanker? It's a, I think it has a cab. I don't think it's an actual. I don't think it's a tanker. The details are online. Yeah. Okay. Um, just throwing out there, gauging interest in the board going back to meeting on the first and third Tuesdays of the month. Yep. Um, while back, we switched to second and fourth. Um, first and third can work better for the for the critical dates, and wouldn't have to move the meetings for when elections come around consistently. So it's something that we could look at doing for July. Just the start of a fiscal year, and just go back to the. We can start on the, the third. Right now, it's the second and fourth, right? Second and fourth. When was it last? First and third. It is we changed it um, a couple of years ago. Well, several years ago is well, is when Ed Gineer us. was okay. reelected. Yeah, to yeah the it was board. before us. Oh, right, yeah. It was when Ed Gineer was reelected to the board, and he was attending the uh, Legion meetings at the time oh, yeah. and we decided the legion wasn't going to change their, their day so we just decided arbitrarily that we'd switch it over to the the second and fourth so there's nothing there that says one way or the other it doesn't matter to me one way or the other so, so patty does it make so is it more logistical sense for from your end and, and mm -hmm. from okay. yeah elections are typically second tuesday of months so it falls on a board night it also makes sense for warrant signings for finance. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm I, good with that, yeah. I'm, I'm good with moving Because we have several reports due monthly, and we can't get the checks until you guys sign the warrant. You can always cancel We're a meeting. We're already way behind. You can always cancel a sleepless meeting if it interferes with anything you have. Yeah, listen to No, no, she, she says she needs us to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they need it before. I'm just kidding. Yeah. The, um, um, what, what is the... Is there any, beyond it being the fiscal year, is there any other reason to, to put it to July? There's just, I think, a natural, there's... We right, you got to announce it. I'm people. just going to say that there's is, people, uh, you got to give some notice, too, as well. Yeah. Um, you know, for the, for the crowds for the that in. We have an yeah. election in June, though, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, then so what I would like to do higher. is I'd like to make a motion that the board change its meeting dates from the 2nd and... Uh, fourth Tuesday of every month to the first and third Tuesday of every month, starting on uh, June first. Yeah. yeah, because this way I won't interfere with that election. I yeah. can second that. So, uh, motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. So, starting in June, we will meet on the first and third Tuesday of every month. All right. No. Budgets are coming. Um, I'm going to propose we meet a uh, regularly scheduled meeting for the 14th, schedule a special meeting for the 21st, and then we have a regular scheduled meeting for the February 28th. And then pencil in 
um, March 8th if we need it. Okay. So, so go back to that. You just said the 28th of January? No, no, no. February. February? Starting February. February. Okay, February yep. 21st as yeah, an extra yeah. meeting. February 14th, special meeting the 21st, regular meeting 28th, and then pencil in March 8th if, needed. if we need it. And March 8th would be the first Tuesday. Hopefully we don't need it, but just in case. Okay. And then 315 would be our regular. Got it. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Uh, I got a one for you. Um, we have an issue with our, our trio software with the police contracts going to 2.5% for the main PERS and us having other employees that are the 5%. Trio can't handle that. Also, we're going to bring forward this change anyways. I'll throw it out for tonight just for consideration. I have the language in front of me too here, um, but maybe it's something we can put on for the next board meeting as a amendment to the personnel policy. Again, if there's a there's a issue with retiree hires in in trio not being able to do the different deductions for the employee and employer for the main purse. Have you contacted Trio to see if they can help with that? Because I know we other, have, we have been other in communities have, have to institute that. Yeah. We have been in I mean I I, I can check back in with Lisa. I, I had the same question, and she said that there's an issue with with it. Um, do we cut the payroll checks here? Employee checks, do they come out of here, or do we have a payroll company do it? Can I come yeah. out of here? Okay. Yeah, they, they come here, yeah. So I have um, the amendment. Actually, this is what it, what it would look like. So what are you asking for? To change the personnel policy to match what we're doing for the police. And um, I'm not asking for any action tonight, just uh, bringing it forward and something we can put on the agenda for next meeting if that's something, a direction you want to add in. So how, I guess I'm a little confused, you're saying that TRIO can't implement this, but yet you want to change the policy? Just because we have two, we have, we have, um, one where it would be 2.5% where the town pays 2.5% and the employee pays the other 2.5%. And, and then we have another retiree hire, the code within TRIO, that is the employee pays the 5%. Okay, so the one, so the changing the personnel policy would bring it all into two and a half percent for the retiree. So house. you're not looking to change the trio system. You're looking to change the amount of percentage that the town pays for rehire. Yep, retiree hires. Yep. And I can actually have what that means financially for the next meeting. Just so we're looking at, just like we just like we did for the just like we had for the police contract, and, you know, who, what it means financially. So, be, so right now it stands that the the employee pays the five percent. Correct. And you want to sit it? You want to split that? That the employee pays two and a half, and the town pays two and a half. Yep. And you have a. Uh, uh, financial analysis breakdown of how much that's going to cost us? I can do that. For a, for a year. I mean, yeah. 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 For a year. But this only affects those who have retired and mm -hmm. have been rehired. Right. Correct. Exactly. Yep. This is not for all employees. Just retiree hires. Right. So it's mostly the, the whole police department, isn't it? Half of them. Half of them, yeah. <laughs> right. And that's <laughs> already, and that's already, that change has already happened for the officers in the police contract so what does their contract say two and it's the two and a half it's not the five yeah two and a half percent okay yep. but the mm -hmm. rest of the rest of the town is still at five mm -hmm. and this is going to change everybody to be uniform mm -hmm. right yep and other than the police department we don't have any other rehired correct rehired just, anyway, just right? police so it's just right now it's the police and there might be some fire that are coming up to be eligible. Last thing I have, uh, the town submitted CDS funding, which is also known as the earmark for the downtown work. There's a $3.142 million funding package. We've already been awarded. 
Uh, we just had to uh, kind of apply to it to gain access to it. So we're just trying to get get that money. Sebago Tech has helped helped us put put it together. It includes ten million dollars of total projects to pretty much show the need. Hey, we we need more more than the three million. Um, and uh, it is going to be used for for further funding packages. It does use some concepts from Malone and McBroom. And the intention was to show those segments that some of them are pretty straightforward. Some of them we know there's very little that needs to be done. There's some that need to be completely reworked and engineered. And we need to spend some engineering dollars to make sure all the pieces fit together. And I, I probably could do a quick presentation or just get those segments down. Like from the Eleanor, it, so first of all, the, the Eleanor Sullivan Street Main Street intersection needs to be completely reworked, and then from that from that intersection, right, pretty much right across the street, up. <coughs> so it's pretty straightforward what needs to happen there, and then from there to the Jordan Wilson Sullivan intersection, very very straightforward. Sidewalks on both sides, on street parking. You know, that's some of them. Some of the other ones are more involved, and there's a lot of variables and what what can happen. Um, you know, something we talked about with Tom today is, you know, we've kicked around the idea during the traffic study about turning Sullivan two way. My opinion, how Tom agrees at this point, I don't see a reason to go two way. The cost benefit, the confusion, losing parking spaces, it works the way it is. Um, there's an idea kicked around for a pedestrian plaza and closing up access through um, from Rochester Street and directing all the traffic down Eleanor. I'm not convinced, and that's not the intention of this funding package to do that. It's to it's to fund some engineering to figure out what we do want to do. Wait, do we have all this on blueprints? What's going to happen? Is there a set of blueprints that Sebago did? We have a mix. We have a mix of <laughs> concepts. Five or six different concepts. concepts yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When are we going to get a hard? So that's part of this, so this so, so that's part of with this funding, the projects that we know the, the projects that I would say are not controversial at all that are just like yeah there's not you're not going to do anything along Sullivan Street other than put sidewalks, you know and it's like that's easy. Um, We're going to put down cement hot top brick sidewalks. Probably cement I'd imagine, but it's up for discussion. Right? I think yeah. sidewalk on both sides. Yeah, no, I, I, you probably saw my email I sent out earlier. Is uh, no, it's something that I've been involved with right from the start before as a selectman um, and with Envision Berwick, and you know there've been several concepts brought forward by different engineering firms that um, I put the nicest way I can put it is they were designed by traffic engineers. They didn't think about people. Mm -hmm. And they were thinking about moving vehicles and things, and the big concern was with uh, lights over in Summersworth and the backups in Summersworth and things. And so there's a lot of things that were thrown around. And um, is, as James said, some of them, like the intersection with School Street and Sawmill Hill and that, this is pretty straightforward and stuff. And the concepts, McBroom or whatever the name is, uh, had of closing off. Rochester Street over in this side of the town hall and getting all that traffic to come around the town hall this way is, I thought was absolutely insane is when you look at right the 18 wheelers just going this way around just imagine them both coming at this intersection here so as James and I had a discussion earlier and as he explained to me is those were put there just as a placeholder more or less to say we're considering these some changes here but we haven't made any final plans and and that's what the money that he's asking us to, to look at there is to engineer it all out so we have one plan exactly exactly yeah because you know, one of the other plans you know, i thought that's why we had sebago they help well yeah they, they will do that plan. they will do that and we, yeah. so that the money we're paying them doesn't include that they so the, applic so the application that we had to submit, I would have never in my life been able to do that. It was like, I don't even know, 60 pages and all this 
So that they helped us. They we paid them a little bit to get access to that three million dollars, and then on the once we get that money, a certain percentage of that money will be allocated towards engineering, which that's why we picked Sebago Technics. Right. To we picked we went on to bid for engineers, saying, "Hey, we have three million dollars. We need an engineer to help engineer for those three million dollar projects." But yeah, that's one thing that we have been missing is an overall plan. You know, right. I, th I thought yeah. we were going to change the parking out here too, <coughs> to angle parking. And we it's talked of, about that. That's one of the things we've talked about. Again, nothing's been you no know, put down on paper as you no know, final design. So there, there's some issues with backing up. I know on Rochester Street, there's an issue on backing up on state roads. I'm not sure if if we're not. If we're not stuck to that, I'm I'm with you. I mean, if we can if we can throw, I used to be a big, you know, there's some benefits to having parallel parking because you can keep the street narrower, but I see angle parking working in a lot of different areas. Yeah, on, yeah. on this street out here, I think it will work. It works good in Dover. The only problem in Dover is you have to. It's hard backing out Central Ave. Right, I was but backing out this <laughs> today. Other than that, it works well. There's, there's a skill to it, and you're backing uphill. Blind. So that's it. Um, dig a hole once. We'll be meeting. Um, we've been trying to nail down a date. I think Wednesday the 18th. And it'll probably be at in the evening. This month. This month. Yep. So yeah. the 18th. Yep. It'll be both. It'll be a hybrid meeting. So as the yeah, projects kind of come down the line, there'll be more. You know, things will become more crystallized, and then there is the. Um, the Sawmill Hill School Street project is a million and a half million and a half dollar project. Um, that includes new sidewalks and alignment. The um, Alfall project that's fully funded. That's one point four million. And also, we're probably going to get another grant for fifty thousand to build out Great Falls Park. So it'll all be happening around you know, the next two to three years. And there's more. And there's more to go. City of Sanford, they did it they, pretty much exactly what we're doing, working with different engineers, different concepts, different projects, and then they went on top of that to get $25 million. We can do that to get another seven. I think. Where, are they, where are they using that? All different yeah. neighborhoods. And, uh, so that must be where we got the job. Okay. We picked up a big job there. Right down, mm -hmm. yeah. pretty much downtown, but it's it spans 10, 15 different streets. Right. Okay. Yep. Yep. Including right in front of my apartment. <laughs> so as a follow-up, James, then, I don't know, a couple months ago, we talked about, you're talking about a lot of different changes in the town. You're talking about a lot of different things going on. We talked about getting that sign. You gave us some quotes on some prices for getting a sign mm -hmm. out here uh, that we can move around and different entities can use. Um, what did we ever do with that? Did, oh, did we purchase one? No. And, and Or is it in this year's going to be, in, you proposing it in put this in year's this year, budget? Put in this year's budget, yep. Okay. All right. Did your price went out? Yeah, they, they range. I think the one that we need is, I forget the exact amount, but I think oh, it's wow. in the 11,000. Yeah, it was up there. It was more than 10, and I was kind of shocked. Money, but. Huh? Yeah. but it's one, I've been talking with Chief Chief Town. It's They have, like, radar built into it, so it's something that could be multi-purpose. And I talked with Chief Town about it could be housed there as well. Yeah, but things like, you know. No parking or a snowstorm. Right. We can change it, all sorts of town meeting tonight. Select was meeting tonight. Road closed, transfer station yeah. rates changing, the library having an event. I'm just saying if the town owns it, then we can let various departments utilize it. You and I discussed this before, James, but um, I, I talked to you about the, Steve used to send us a, if, the week we were have a meeting, Steve would send us an email. Is that right, Tom? Yeah. He, he, he tried he most tried. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we get a regular I, I found it very helpful yeah. to fire up my brain. Sure. So if you could do that. Okay. I, I know you've asked it. me about that before. Yeah. Anything else, James? That's that's all for you now. All right. Uh, we have no site board communications. Accounts payable. All right. We have a payroll warrant number 42 from December 29th, 2022, in the amount of $85,428.11.
We have payroll warrant number 43 from December 29th, 2022, in the amount of $1,959.29. We have payroll warrant number 44 from January 5th, 2023, in the amount of $74,764.39. We have accounts payable warrant number 40, oh, payroll warrant number 45 uh, from January 12th, 2023, in the amount of $96,187.14. And we have the accounts payable warrant number 46 from uh, January 10th, 2023, in the amount of $1,045,958.17. I make the motion that we pay our bills. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills paid. Um, we have no new business. No quick claim deeds or installments. We have a payment and a penalty. So, Alex, is that you? Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Alex. All right, so we do have an abatement for it's for Glenn Emery. Uh, it's tax map R59 5 at 175 Blackberry Hill Road. Um, the subject property is currently designated as a commercial warehouse on a parcel of land consisting of 2.41 acres. Uh, the building was previously used for warehousing purposes through a grandfathered commercial status. The business closed, restricting the ability to be used commercially and making it part of the R3 zone. This was discovered through a December 3rd, 2020 planning board meeting when the owner approached the planning board uh, about renting the space out. Uh, the board discussed having a workshop to create an amendment to the current zoning. It was uh, eventually decided that there was no interest from the planning board in pursuing the change any further. Um, with that, the structure should be changed from a commercial warehouse to a residential. Um, it is recommended that an abatement be granted in the amount of $1,003.92. So, so, excuse me, but what the hell? So the guy's got an empty warehouse there that he can't use. Yeah, that's yeah. bullshit. It's bullshit. We shouldn't, that shouldn't be happening. I, I, I don't know. I, give me the abatement, but I don't think that I should be happening. Well, that's, that's wrong. The planning board makeup's a little different. I can, uh, yeah, we, I mean, I can talk to planning. And it is a little confusing. He bought a, he bought a warehouse and now he can't. No, he had it. He had, they had a the, farm equipment. There, 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 there was a lag. They in, actually wanted um, to, Turn into you know, a warehouse. They used to keep yeah. farm equipment in it anyway. Yeah. It was grandfather farm equipment. That's what they did. Well, far, farm equipment's an allowed use there. They, right. They used to sell farm equipment, but they don't anymore there. Yeah. And the business closed. And yeah. so there was essentially a gap in between businesses. So yeah, but you don't want the yeah. grandfathered status yeah, was, eliminated. Was, was ended. Yeah. So the new owner right. bought it. No. no the owner still owns it. The no, same owner. Same owner. He yeah, just wants yeah. a different business. He wants to rent it out. It's, uh, it's, it's been it's been closed as a way. It was Hatley Emery's no, no. Black uh, Hill Farm Equipment. Right, Black yeah. Hill Farm Equipment years and years ago, um, and his his son Glenn inherited it, and he kept it as a warehouse for a while. I know he kept stuff in there for quite a while, but I don't know when he stopped using it as the warehouse. So what's he doing? Turn the house, tear, tear it down, and put up two houses. Right. You're better off having a business team. We get taxes coming in. Oh, well, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. What, I don't know anything about the, that. Has uh, to change, James. You, know, you got to figure that one out. No, I brought it. I brought it forward. I wasn't planning it, Ryan. I wasn't planning at the time. I brought it forward. But I want to have a business, and he can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Bullshit. I can bring it forward again. Yeah, let us know when the meeting is. So. <laughs> we'll talk to him. Uh, I will hear a motion. I'll make a motion that the uh, recommended abatement of $1,003.92 be granted. I'll, I'll second the motion for discussion. All right. Any further discussion? No. Yes. So my question then is if we grant this, does that mean if he comes back before the planning board that he, it can't go back to being? Yeah, it can't go back. It can't go back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just need a, um, a land use. Basically, in the land use ordinance table, there's actually there's specific performance standards that would have allowed it 
because what we didn't want to do is open up to large scale uh, warehouse and distribution in the R3 zone is basically was the issue. But there's, I, there, the, it's all written there, ready to go for like low. It's, it's a small plot of land. For like low, it's a small, small little building. There's no way they're going to go large scale anything. Hmm? It's just too small of a site. And the building's too small. The man should be taken care of. So then that, that brings a question. So we agree to this abatement. That means he cannot do, he cannot rent it out. He can't do anything like that unless he goes back before the planning board. Right. He's got to go anyway before the yeah, planning the, board he, to do it. And yeah, if he goes but, back to the warehouse, the we the abatement goes next. Oh, right. yeah, right. Regardless, as of April 1st, 2022, he couldn't do anything commercially with it. So right. no, that's he, what the, the tax bill was based on. Right. right. The past right. year's tax bill. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, because even if you were to go before planning at that point, then we would need to actually make an amendment to the land use ordinance to, to change it. To change okay. it so you would right. have that ability, right? So, okay. Sorry, I just uh, need to clarify it. As long as it doesn't start doing anything funky on it, I'm okay with throwing it there. All right. All those in favor? I didn't get a second. I was Linda. Oh, maybe I missed it. Okay. Thank you. All right. And farmland penalty. We also have a farmland penalty for tax map R40-4-1 um, on Durant Road. Uh, property owner Brown Industrial Group acquired the property from Esther Goodrich Puffer and Adam S. Puffer on 8-29-2022 through book 19101, page 229. Uh, this lot no longer qualifies for the farmland program due to the size a penalty must be issued. Um, we can see the attached farmland penalty calculation sheets um, calculated pursuant to the uh, 36 MRS subsection 1112 C 3. Um, therefore, it is recommended that you approve a farmland penalty in the amount of $15,245.10 uh, to the property owners for the removal of a 2.1 acre from farmland classification. Alex, are they already aware that this will be covered? Yep, they were notified uh, la last week. Yep. The dollar amount. Dollar amount. We the notice went out in the mail last week. Uh, it with had the a dollar, dollar amount. amount. It had a dollar amount. Yeah, on. with the dollar amount on. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve the farmland penalty in the amount of fifteen thousand two hundred forty-five dollars and ten cents to uh, Tech Map R zero four zero. Dash four dash one. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Patty, this uh, this one also has engineer and Ken on here. Oh, good. <laughs> we'll switch it. <coughs> we must use used an old one, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for waiting so long. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Um, second public comment. The public has left us. Um, there's no executive session tonight. Um, <laughs> just going to ask Patty a question. Um, any other business non agenda items? Yes, Patty, your question. <laughs> I know, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Patty, this year, um, yeah, we have two select board positions that are going to be open. In June. Yeah. In June. So we need. I don't think. Have you made up your mind? Uh -huh. Yay. Of course he's going to. What are you I'm talking back about? on the line now myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't, you know. Well, uh, pretty soon you're going to have to take out nomination papers and all that stuff. And we got a month or two left. Just yeah. Just, I'm just throwing it out there to the public to make sure that they know that this is coming so that if somebody's out there that's eager to volunteer and wants to be part of this wonderful program. This is a paid position. <laughs> it's, it's a paid position. It pays about $25 a meeting. I think it's something like that. It's, it's, really, it's really worthwhile, I promise you. Um, Stop breaking it down by the minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't break it down by the hour. You'll be depressed. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So, also, uh, there, the, there was no form for Josh in here for the appointment for Josh. Yeah, I thought that was the was first one. 
Yeah, there should have been one. I got one. Yeah, I thought it was the first one we signed. Jeremy, Marie, Elise, Cyrus. Yeah, there's not one for oh. for Josh. The the copies, it, there's one in the in the book, but there's not one in here. So. Oh, maybe that's where I saw it in the book. You can pull the book and sign that. That's All right. fine. When it says copy. Yeah, it says copy at the top. Is that okay? You guys are being difficult. <laughs> I'm, I'm, all right. You know what happens if we don't correct this tonight? Stuff. You're going to come back to us next week and be like, hey. Can you come in here and get this? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I make a motion that we adjourn. Second that motion. Yeah. All those in favor? <laughs>